um, when you go outside the country, when you go to maybe America or you go to London, you go and pick money from the streets. Money is there on the street, so you just go and pack it and come back to Nigeria and come and bless your family members. <laughs> and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Uche and if this is your first time on this channel and you're not subscribed yet please hit on the subscribe button down below so you get notified whenever i post a new video and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back to this channel i hope you're having fun with the content that i'm posting on here and i hope it does make a lot of difference in your reading preferences so um in this video i'm going to be reviewing an african classic so the book i'm going to be talking about in this video is second class citizen by Puchi M. Mecheta and it was published in 1974. So this book is an autobiography and it tells the story of um, Puchi M. Mecheta herself although the main character here is referred to as Ada. So um, Ada is um, a young girl who um, lived with her parents and her only brother boy in Lagos. So um, there's one thing that I've noticed when it comes to um, books written by Buche Mecheta and this should be about the um, fourth book from her that I'm reading and um, her story is usually revolve around Ibuzo. Ibuzo is in Delta State, Lagos. It also revolves around um, reincarnation. So um, Ada is said to be um, a reincarnate of um, a paternal grandmother and um, from when Ada was small, Ada always wanted to um, go to school and she was born in this era where the girl child education was not really paramount. People preferred to send their male children to schools and um, for their female children it was optional but it was believed that the more educated um, a girl is the more a bride price would be because um, it felt like it was going to be repayment for the money that um, her parents had spent on her education. So um, Ada um, lost her father when she was young. So Ada was very determined to um, go to school and um, her father was sponsoring her education. But um, when her father died, um, her mother was remarried to her father's brother and um, the children that is her and her brother, they were distributed to other family members to take care of and when it comes to um, the Igbo culture, that's the way it has been so it, that is what happens in most cases. So um, Ada was sent to live with a relative and there um, she continued schooling although her school was changed to um, one with um, a lower standard and there we see how determined Ada was to further edu her education, you know. Um, she won a scholarship. She lied to her cousin when he gave her money to um, buy some things and she used the money to pay for um, her entrance examination. So it was hard for her that, but she thrived. And um, when she was through with, with her second year school education, she got a job as a librarian with um, an American company and um, she was earning very well. And so the question for her to get married arose. So um, before then, um, while she was, I think, about 11 or so, um, men were already coming for a hand in marriage and, um, you know, they were older men, men that were bowed already. So um, her mother was telling her that, okay, that older men made better husbands and, you know, that ideology, that mentality, that saying is not something that belongs in the past because even up till now, we still see women who say these things that, okay, older men make them better husbands, but Ada was too young, so she met um, her husband, Francis. So um, Francis um, is Igbo like herself and, you know, they got married and Francis is from a large family. So everybody was now dependent on um, on Ada's salary because Ada was earning very well at that time. She was earning very, I think she was earning close to 60 pounds and 60 pounds was a whole lot of money at that time. So um, she was fending for everybody things were going on fine she had her first baby her first baby was a girl and you know later on in the book she was saying that oh that when she gave birth to a girl her in-laws were looking at her like so she had wasted their time the nine months pregnancy and the four days sleepless night because she was in labor only for her to give birth to a girl and there were issues surrounding the circumstances that led to her marriage to Francis because um, her family didn't want her to even marry Francis in the first place but she was headstrong and she still went ahead and married Francis so um, it was at this time, this era that um, Nigerians were migrating to um, UK because you know the pastures seemed to be greener there and you know when you come back from Obodo Ibu 
Obudu Ibo is still the UK or just any foreign land that has white people in it. You know, when you come back from this place, the respect that you get, if you talk, people will listen to you willingly. And you know, people feel that when you come back from outside the country, you're coming with loads of money because um, when you go outside the country, when you go to maybe America or you go to London, you go and pick money from the streets. Money is there on the street, so you just go and pack it and come back to Nigeria and come and bless your family members. So, um, because of this, my dad brought up the idea that, okay, that they should relocate to um, London. And um, after much pushing, it was agreed that, okay, that um, a husband, Francis, would go outside the country and maybe come back later. The initial plan was not for her to join him there, but she convinced her mother-in-law and, um, you know, she had a cordial relationship with her mother-in-law. So she was able to convince her mother-in-law that, okay, that if she goes with her husband outside the country, while her husband is studying, she can be working and be sending money back to them. So why her in-laws were reluctant in allowing her join her husband outside the country was, you know, she had a very good job in Nigeria here. So they felt that like their source of um, livelihood, seeing that she's the breadwinner, would be lost. But she was able to convince them and then she joined her husband in London and by then she already had two children. So there in London, things were not rosy for them, like it was hard. You know, when it comes to relocation, it's quite funny that in your own home country, it's almost like you're living comfortably well, you're not hungry, but by the time you move outside the country, you know, with the readjustment and everything, it's like, <laughs> almost like you're a king in your home country, but when you move to another man's land, you have to do many jobs to survive if you're not up to par. So, um, by the time she got to London, already her husband, Francis, had already well, in fact he had already imbibed this second class citizen mentality so this is where the meaning of second class citizen comes to play so prior to my reading this book i did think that okay second class citizen was just um for um just a woman that okay a woman is not um equal to a man and you know she is to be subjected to whatever conditions the patriarchal society puts her to but here the author just takes her time to just give us the disparities of this second class citizenship so now in london they were second class citizens because they were not white they were black people so and you know what it is with racial discrimination so um there are some places they are not allowed to go like if they want to apply to um, rent an apartment you will see signs like no colors allowed so that kind of discrimination that was what made them second class citizens and buchi emicheta also talked about um a woman being subjugated to being a second class citizen too but i'm just bringing it just to give you the disparities of um, this second class citizenship so um while um ada was with her husband in um in london it was not it was not easy because now um francis her husband was studying this course that he was studying that he kept on failing and he, he was using this um studying as um as an excuse to not work so i would say francis is a very lazy person and um, ada was saddled with doing all the work she got a job as a librarian in london too and did i tell you that ada is actually very intelligent yeah she's very very intelligent and very diligent she's just the perfect character for me so um she was working she was a mother and she got pregnant again so back in lagos um ada's um let's say king's women or women who knew ada would call her touch me not and why they call that touch me not was because we said that anytime my husband does touches her like this she does get pregnant immediately so that kind of <laughs> that kind of silly joke yeah but in actual sense that was the case because ada was getting pregnant at odd times times when the pregnancy was not needed because they were struggling as a family but her husband was was stupid enough to to not want to take responsibility in ensuring that they give space before they get pregnant again and um you know ada was just heavily pregnant she was working she was she was feeding the whole family and even at that it's not as if her husband was the perfect husband there was this issue of domestic violence her husband was beating her and he was forcing her to to um have sex with him so um it was it was really really a pathetic um situation but others still stayed on and 
at the initial point she didn't think of leaving her husband so she was still enduring it and the crazy thing about it is that when Ada earns her salary she hands it over to her husband then her husband gives her two pounds for housekeeping so her husband was in charge of her money he wasn't working she was the one doing all the work and he was the one that well he was the one that was you know telling how the money would be spent even when she gave it to her fourth child um, she didn't even have a uh, night dress to wear because she gave birth to the child through cesarean section and uh, she didn't even have a good night dress and her husband would not god guys if i keep talking about <laughs> if i keep talking about this uh, rubbish husband that they are calling francis i mean it's I'll, I'll just get angry it was just so annoying so pathetic apart from that the author tells us how the character at that um, found her love for writing and I feel this is just like it was inevitable for someone that works in a library she has worked in a library all her life there was this um, indecisiveness you know when this time when you doubt yourself but she bought notebooks then she decided to write and the first story that she was going to write was The Bright Price and majority of us have read The Bright Price I've also reviewed the book The Bright Price so um, I'll be leaving a card at the top of the screen so you can just go there and watch my review on The Bright Price so she showed her colleagues and you know, they felt she had written well they liked the book they were giving her just awesome reviews and um, you know she had shown her husband and her husband didn't want to read it she kept you know pestering her husband to read it her husband didn't want to be so the plan for the main character at that was not to be a writer immediately she was thinking that maybe it would be in her 40s that you know she would settle to be a writer but he just found that early because she was in her 20s let's say 2021 and she already had five children 2021 she was already settled with five children coupled with the fact that Francis, her husband, was a serial cheat. So he was cheating on her, but she was not complaining. It's almost like she even encouraged him to even cheat very well so that he would leave her alone and, you know, she can she can struggle to fend for the children that they have already. But the part that scattered my head was when she came back home one day and she saw that Francis had bumped up the... Um, the book that she had written. It was not published yet. She had just had written it in a book. So he was burning it up. He did not see it or and dispose of it because that way she might be able to go back and put the pieces together and maybe write it. But this one, he burnt it and it was, it was, God, it was very sad. It was appalling because I know how hard it is to write a book so for someone to you know there are issues like writer's block and all these things and for someone to have written a book completed it just waiting on when she will have the opportunity to publish it and the that her husband burnt it up so and i'm th and i'm thinking i mean already francis her husband has decided not to be useful to himself to her to his family, nothing. He has decided to be useless, no problem. Now you have a wife who is ready to eradicate this poverty mentality that you have sworn to die in. You know, someone that is there on a bamboo, like she's very hard working. She's trying, fighting to turn nail to just make sure that everything is all right. And here's an opportunity for her to be a writer. She has even completed work and you are burning it too. And I'm thinking, so there's this saying in my place, Igabulo bin. So it just means that will you be a poor person and also be a witch or a wizard? You are poor already, fine, no problem. You decided to be lazy, no problem. But at least in your laziness, allow other people to excel so that they can even feed you. It was so annoying. Like Francis wouldn't work, and the few times when he worked, he was always complaining. Job that somebody would do, a woman would even do, and you know, and be happy doing her work, Francis would come home and want to swallow her with complaint. At first she was having this guilt that okay, um, let her go back to work, you know, at that time she just put to bed. But later on, when she saw that the way Francis is painting this thing is not how it is, so she just decided to just ignore. So Ada's marriage to Francis was, it was hell.
it was hell it was living hell it was terrible and i'm even surprised she lasted that long because if she could have just run away but it was also hard running away because to get an apartment was hard but she was the breadwinner so she could easily run away ah god it, that's just it for um a brief summary of the book without telling you how it ended but um generally i feel this book is is interesting I mean it's really cool and um, one thing I love about this book is how assertive and frank the um, author's narration is there's just this um, conversational way in which um, which Emma writes this book it just feels like she's having a conversation with you you know it's just everything is just free-flowing it's just easy you can see the innocence in the writing it doesn't necessarily have big words or big grammar where you have to go and be looking at dictionary to know oh, what's the meaning of this so it's just written in simple language and it's very easy to understand but the ending of the book was rather confusing i mean i understood the end of the story and okay i like how it ended but i didn't really feel the soft landing to the book i felt like the book ended abruptly like there was a rush and it just ended but that didn't take away from the book because i like how it ended with uh with her husband but i just have to say that that husband francis is the devil he's terrible to think about the abuse that she endured for years with this francis and you know it's quite funny that while they were in lagos he didn't beat her but now they were outside the country he had this control over her to explain his laziness it's just like it's his right seeing that um that he's her husband so she's supposed to work for him i mean he was doing her a whole lot of good by being her husband so it was just crazy to understand and that's just basically it about this book do i recommend this book yes i do and uh, this is one of the favorite classics that i've read and um <laughs> when it comes to Buche Mecheta, it's it's just it's just bliss it's wonderful i mean the fact that her work really did a lot i mean contributing to modern feminism and uh, it's always a wonder reading anything written by buchi mecheta and um that's all i have to say on this review thank you so much for watching please don't forget to click on the like button share this video with your friends and leave your comment in the comment section down below i know that majority of you have read this book so let's discuss in the comment section and guys most importantly do not forget to subscribe to this channel i'll be seeing you in my very next video bye guys